Win or lose, and no matter how much flack I give it, Baylor is a special place. This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. I'm Drake Toll from Sports Illustrated's Inside the Bears. Thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. This is a different episode. It's very anecdotal. It comes from me and from the heart. Um, there, there is something that clicked with me this past weekend that made me think a lot, reflect a lot on my time at Baylor. I'm a senior, so it's a little sentimental. I have three months left till I graduate, so I'm basically reaching for the diploma, about to walk the stage, looking for jobs post-grad that are a little more sustainable or, or a little more fit for someone who's graduating college and trying to make a, a complete living. And it, it hit me in an opportunity this weekend when Jeff Grimes and Sherry Grimes, the uh, family that I'm close to, invited me to come and do play-by-play in-stadium announcing for a special needs, no limitations is the name of the organization, um, a special needs football tournament. I'll call it a tournament. There were five games between the red team and the blue team that each had uh, anywhere from 10 members of the team to, to 15 members of each team. And so an opportunity for people in the city of Waco to come out and, and support those with special needs from all age groups and all abilities. And the Baylor football team volunteered its time to to come out and enjoy that event. Now, look, I, I like to be transparent about this. When I, I walked in there and I see these guys and uh, Blake Shapin and and football players that I've talked about over the course of this show, it's my it's my job to talk about the the way that these guys play on a football field and and talk about their performance. I mean, if one of these guys has a bad game, we talk about it on the podcast or I tweet about it. I, my tweets can get out there. I I understand that I might not have the best rapport with a lot of these athletes. And I knew that coming in, honestly, a little nervous coming in. Felt like I should have apologized to everybody there. Like, hey, guys, sorry that in in doing my job, sometimes I lack humanity and, and talk about a guy who didn't play well when it can be harsh. Like if somebody did a podcast about how my podcast is bad, I understand that that would take a toll on me. And that's what we do for these guys. That's the nature of college athletics. The nature of media too is that, again, as a fan, if somebody has a bad game, you say they had a bad game. It's what we do. But also there's humanity side to it. So coming into this, I, I was nervous. I showed up. I stayed pretty nervous. I decided to, I was going to make it as fun as possible for the kids that were there, the athletes that were participating, and the Baylor players. And by the end of the day, it was such a life-giving, gratifying, special time, uh, special afternoon to see 30, 40 Baylor players, probably more, who took three hours out of their Saturday during a Baylor men's basketball game, by the way, so missing that, to come out and support kids with special needs in the Waco community. And what I saw was was something different. I talked to to Brent Ingram, who's the SID for the football program, who was there, talked to Jeff Grimes, too, at length. And, you know, there are a lot of universities that do stuff like that. There are a lot of colleges that will send their players to, to these events but I don't think there are very many colleges, very many universities whose players would approach it the way the Baylor guys did. There was a this this loving, childlike wonder when it came to how they approached every one of the special needs athletes and the way they approached each other, the way they loved on each other throughout the day. And you could tell the gratitude they had. They, they weren't bored to be there. They were grateful to be there and have that opportunity. They dressed up as cheerleaders and had pom-poms in the end zone. And every play, I mean, there were guys that were, you know, give me the referee jersey, give me the pom-poms. I want to be a cheerleader for this game. I, I want to do this. I, I want to be a buddy. I want to interact with whoever I can and, and be a part of this community. You know, again, I think there are other universities that do it. But seeing the way those Baylor guys did, it, it struck a chord with me that these players who just went six and seven, they didn't have a very good year. There is a, a conference, a new conference coming up. There's so much to be anxious about, worried about so many trippers new and in the fold that there's no way this is an easy off season for these guys. It's pretty put up or shut up off season after a sugar bowl season is followed up by six and seven. But 
there are things that transcend all of that. And things transcended all of that on Saturday when they volunteered their time with a no limitations organization. And, and it, you couldn't tell that the guys had struggled last football season. You couldn't tell that any guy was, was upset with their performance. It, it, it didn't matter. None of that mattered. They were solely focused on making sure these kids had the best time. By, by the end of it, Richard Reese had had pom-poms in his hands for four games. And it's like, look, I found a calling. Like, this is separate from football. If football doesn't work out, he like he said it. He's like, I, I'm going to be a cheerleader. This is I'm having so much fun. They made it bigger than what it w- what it needed to be, what it was supposed to be, just for how much they loved on the athletes that were there, the special needs athletes that were there, and and the way they loved on each other. There was a moment. Now I'm going to get into this in the middle of the episode. We're going to talk Blake Shapin and Sawyer Robertson. Um, there was a moment where where the the director comes out and she says, hey, everybody, I am I need a quarterback. Says, you know, the way that these games are going to work, you're going to have a quarterback from Baylor who's going to be uh, the guy that facilitates the football out to each of the special needs players, to their buddies, that finds a way to get everybody the ball. That that's, you got to be the great facilitator. Do, who's Who do you guys nominate, I guess, as your QB? And immediately, the entire team, shape, shape, get out there, shape, it's shaping. Let's send shape, it's shaping. And pushed Blake Shapin out of the huddle and and into into that role. He played he played quarterback for all five games and did throw an interception at one point in time, which I thought was funny. Um, but the way the way that team rallied around him, he he didn't have a very good football season. He didn't have a very good football season. His numbers weren't great. He was bottom of the totem pole in the Big Twelve, close to it. And and yet that team has so much confidence in him, his leadership ability his maturity, the way he interacts with those guys was, it blew me away. It blew me away. I don't get to be in practices. I don't get to see the way these guys interact in the locker room. It was the first time in my four years at Baylor that I've gotten to see past that curtain and into this team. And it blew me away. Those guys love Blake Shapin. I, I'm glad he didn't transfer because those guys love Blake Shapin. Sawyer Robertson was there. RJ Martinez, they were there. And they, I mean, they, Sawyer said it. He said, look, man, I, you know, the whoever starts for this team, he told me this, and I, and I don't feel bad releasing. I, you know, I don't want to use this as like, a, oh, I went to this event so I can talk about you know things you know behind the scenes to the media. Um, but he said, he said, look, whoever whoever's quarterback, we win games. That that's where it is. That's that's what whoever's best for this team. That's what matters. And so it said so much about him. It said so much about Blake Shape, and I learned a lot about this team and about how special a place this is. To be transparent with you, and I guess, I guess at this point, um, you know, it's it's happened. It's like it's not, it's not going to be not public. Like I can't. No one said don't talk about it. Um, my due to due to some things, I have I have I'm no longer the public address announcer for Baylor softball. I don't feel as though um, at they they've said that it's because students they're they're moving away from students in public address roles, and I think that's true. I think to to an, an in another degree, um, maybe I don't fit the Baylor culture. Maybe I, I don't fit the I I say some things and I tweet some things that don't necessarily align with what Baylor's looking for in in their in their roles in their media department, especially um, due to my status as an NIL agent. If you didn't know, I, I signed on with the company. Pretty recently to represent players in the NIL world. Uh, due to that, my, my curls have been revoked. So from now on, I'm a fan. I, I truly am just a Baylor fan at this point. Still working for Inside the Bears, but without complete and total access to the teams. And that's squarely on my role as an NIL agent, but it's given me the opportunity with three months to go before I graduate to take a different approach and a different look at Baylor. It doesn't mean that, okay, now I'm not associated with the university aside from being a student, so I can be raunchy, I can be even even wilder or even more clickbaity. Um, it, it does mean that I'm, I'm going to take a new approach to this, uh, that I will not be outlandish because of this or, or give backlash or try to make this into some big deal because I don't think it needs to be. And I, I don't think anybody there has ill intent. I don't know that if I fit the Baylor culture they're looking for from a media standpoint or if I'm a good representation for the university. I, I don't think I am. I'm, I'm not what fits that brand. I'm not the safari guy. Um, and they probably aren't very happy that I, I ragged on the safari guy as much as I did. But I, this place is still special to me. It's really, really special to me. And given the opportunity these next couple months to be a fan, to be somebody who's a, a lay person and a student, is going to be awesome. So it's it's difficult. It's difficult. I'm not going to be in a Scott Drew press conference again. I'm not going to be around Dave Aranda. I'm not going to be around that football program come, come spring ball. Um, and that sucks. It really does suck. But 
it's given me time now about a week to understand, okay, well, do I love Baylor because I had that access or do I love Baylor because I, I truly love what this university is about? And after Saturday, I understand that Baylor and, and what this university is transcends all of the, the media stuff and all the weird tweets that I send out and all the podcasts that are clickbaity and all of that. This is just a good place. This is a good place with good people who mean well, and they want to represent a brand that is very specifically faith-based, and I respect the heck out of that. Notice how I said heck. We only get one of those per semester here, and, and I love it, and I love Baylor. I do. Uh, credentials or not, um, PA at softball or not, I, I do. I'm happy to be here, and I'm glad I went here. And Saturday reaffirmed a lot of that for me. This coaching staff is person over player. They take that to an extreme. And if it means they're going to lose four games next year rather than go 12-0, and 0, after what I saw Saturday, I mean, there's so much more. This team is so much more. I, I've been around Georgia. I was I was around Georgia in the 2019 Sugar Bowl. And that team's culture is just not something. Like, I, I was kind of, I was so, I was off-put. I was off-put by the way they interacted with each other, by the way the coaches interacted with the players. And at Baylor, if you sacrifice a couple wins because you are person over player, because when you come here, you know you're going to matter whether you win or you lose, I think that does go a long way. I really do. Uh, what else goes a long way before we get into a Blake Shapin combination, which is going to be awesome? What does also go a long way is LinkedIn Talent Solutions. I'm applying for jobs. If you need me, look, go to LinkedIn Talent Solutions, purple hashtag hiring frame. I got a job offer, yesterday job offer, it's a summer job thing, in Anchorage, Alaska. That's right, Anchorage, Alaska. Might go do some baseball play-by-play. -play. You know why? Because I applied at LinkedIn Talent Solutions, the Anchorage Bucks. So right now, go to LinkedIn Talent Solutions. Hire somebody for your job. Hire somebody for fun. Just do it. Hire an intern. It helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools, they go beyond resume data by using insights from your past, from your job posts, and they have 175 million members. Did you hear that? 875 million members? 875 million members. Um, LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College is where you need to go. LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. You can post your job for free and find who you want to hire faster. Terms and conditions do apply. All right. It's like, look, this is, this is weird. This one's weird. This one's funky for me because I, I have, I've teetered on the line of, okay, should Blake Shaven be the starting quarterback next year? Let's I'll be transparent with you immediately. No. Oh, like I, I, I've been the, I've been the advocate for Sawyer Robertson. I've been the advocate for co quarterback competition and that I think Sawyer Robertson, Robertson is ready and can go right now. He only has 15 passes in the last two years. Blake Shapin has started 15-ish games as a college quarterback. Blake Shapin has started a Big 12 championship game. He's got experience. Injuries have not helped him over the course of the last two years, for sure, at West Virginia against Oklahoma State. And my, I, I, have, I have been an advocate for Sawyer Robertson to be the starting quarterback as a catalyst for change. Something needs to change. To me, in the quarterback role, and Sawyer Robertson's got the, the the prototype. He's got the build. He's got the the NFL prowess. He's the highest rated quarterback transfer in Baylor history or quarterback recruit in Baylor history outside of Jarrett Stidham. So why not start the kid? You didn't take him not to start him. But I'm I'm going to go back on all that a little bit. If Shapin's the starting quarterback next season, and this is a conversation I had. Again, I, I don't want to use Saturday as this crutch. The opportunity I got to be around this team Saturday is a crutch to tell you any inside information. I'm not, I, there's nothing I, I, I would put out there. But I do want to explain my observations because I, I believe they're crucial to this, this team and its future success. There, there is a big-time draw between these guys, that locker room, and Blake Shapin, from what I saw. Now, I've heard things. I've heard the contrary. I've heard that Shapin's lost the locker room, but what I saw on Saturday from Monterey Baldwin, guys like that who are, Shape, get out there. Like, you're our guy. That was their guy. The way that he interacted with Richard Reese. Watching him talk to the other players. Watching the quarterback room interact with each other. Blake Shapin was the leader of that football team. How how good of a leader do you have to be? Think about Russell Wilson in in at, in Denver. Russell Wilson, All Pro quarterback, has a gajillion dollars playing football in his career already, and hopefully for him, his career lasts a few more years. He was bad this year, 
and the locker room was split. Some players were outspoken against him. Players across the league were outspoken against him. Some guys from Seattle had to come to his aid. It was an ugly situation. That, by virtue of a quarterback having a bad year. There are guys who struggle, and immediately they lose the locker room. They lose their starting job. You see it year in, year out in the NFL and college football. Blake Shapin, at 6-7 and seven last year, as poor as he played down the stretch in the last four games that Baylor lost consecutively, it would have been, I mean, think about the interception against TCU, the Texas game where he throws a couple picks that are just, oh, where are you throwing the ball? And then Air Force was just Air Force. You would think... If someone could could play bad enough for a team to lose respect, a team to lose faith, a team to lose uh, any hope in in one person, it would be the season Blake Shapin had last year. Let's be honest about it. But they haven't. What does it say about Blake Shapin, his prospect for next season, that he has still not lost the locker room? That when the guys, when when people at, at this event say, hey, we need a quarterback, no one looks around the room to see if uh, is it Sawyer, is it RJ, is it Blake, is it any, n- any number of the guys that are on roster? No. Blake Shape, no hesitation. It's Blake. It's Shape. Get up there, Shape. He's our guy. He's our guy. The the football players, the players, the athletes I've talked to, I mean, I've, I played, I dabbled in like junior high and high school. The players that I've talked to, that's huge almost more so than your performance on the field is how you interact with others in the locker room, how you lead in the locker room. If next season, Dave Aranda and Jeff Grimes say, look, Blake Shapin's the option we're going to go with. I don't have a problem with it after seeing what I saw on Saturday. I don't have an issue with Blake Shapin being the starting quarterback if he's the guy that all 100 kids rally around to be the guy for them, to be the leader for them. I want to get to that more. But first, I got to tell you about Built Bar. Oh, Built Bar. You guys know I love Built Bar. You do. You know that. I hope you love Built Bar too. You got to try one. If you haven't tried one, you got to try one. They are healthy, they are tasty, they are delicious, and they are good for you. You're going to think they're not good for you when you eat them because you, the, uh, it's 100% real chocolate. You're going to taste it. You're like, shoot, this is a lot of sugar, but it's not. It's perfect for your New Year's resolution. Built Bars are so good. They are rich. They are covered in 100% real chocolate, real, actual, genuine chocolate. Believable, unbelievable flavors. Churro. Peanut butter brownie, coconut almonds, my favorite big almond joy guy. Hate me if you will. I also like Twizzlers. I'm not sure how Built does it. I don't. They, I don't. It's like little magic bars, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein. And now you don't got to wait. You go to Walmart. You're doing your shopping trip. You go to Walmart. They'll got it. You can go to Built.com still. Get it at Built.com. Have it ordered to your house. Or you can go to Walmart. Go to Sam's Club. Go to Walmart. Cookies and cream, four bar box. Four bar box. Double chocolate, coconut puffs. Sam's Club has 13 bar boxes. Brownie batter, churro. You can thank me later. All of that built bar or at built.com. Bring it on. Dave, Dave Aranda, Sean Bell, Jeff Grimes come out this offseason and say, Blake Shapin is our guy. I'm not going to have an issue again because the way that he interacts with the other guys, the way that they interact with him. More importantly, he is he is that leader, quieter, but a leader and stipulation to this, because I know a lot of you are throwing the phone or the headphones or whatever you're listening on, turning off the speaker, whatever uh, stipulation to that is there's got to be competition. There's got to be a competition. You can't just say, OK, he's our guy, period. Let's move on. We're, well, we're good. We're good. He's our guy. I, I would I guess maybe I could have reason with that to an extent, but you have to create competition this offseason. Transparently, I, RJ Martinez, Martinez is going to be a great addition to this team unless he has a really big foundational transformative offseason. He's not in the running in my mind to be Baylor's starting quarterback next year. He's got more experience than both of the guys on the roster combined in Blake Shapin and Sawyer Robertson, but that experience at Northern Arizona doesn't have a ton of wins tacked to it, and the the performances are, are kind of spotty. He's Some of his best performances come against the best teams, but those best teams don't stack up to when you go play at Texas or go, I guess, next season. Next season's at home against Texas, or you go play, um, there's no OU, uh, Cincinnati on the road or UCF even. like the, the NAU doesn't compare to those, so unless he has a big offseason, it's either Blake Shapin or Sawyer Robertson, and there must, must, must be a competition between those two guys. There has to be, period. 
you got to force Blake Shapin's hand. If you're going to start him, you have the knowledge you're going to start him. There is an, there's a value. There's a value to saying, okay, this is our guy, period. We're going to go on. But I, I, you're doing a disservice to Sawyer Robertson, who very well could start next year, who I've been advocating for to start and will continue to likely with an understanding that if Blake Shapin does, I've got a soft spot for that. But you need to tell Sawyer Robertson, who just transferred from Mississippi State because Will Rogers is so good, we will give you a fighter's chance. This is yours. From everything I've heard from Sawyer, who came on this show, from everything I've heard inside the program, that's what it is. I mean, the guy has no indication that he won't start next year. Uh, he has no indication of where he'll be next year, and he's going to fight for a starting role. That needs to be clear, as it was last offseason. There is a battle for the quarterback position, and there are multiple players in that battle. Last year, it was between Bohannon, Shapin, and Kyron Drones. All what what do we all say? What do we all say? It needs to be Blake Shapin. All of us said it needs to be Blake Shapin. Do something different. Despite Gary Bohannon winning us a Big Twelve championship, we didn't play him, but he won a lot of the games. Got you there. Uh, that that throw it all away. We're all good. We need Blake Shapin now. Okay, sweet. Well, we followed you. Look what happened. So I'm saying all this offseason, everybody saw your Robertson. He saw your Robertson. He's our guy. He's our guy. He's our guy. Well, you got what you wanted last offseason. What happened? That's another, I mean, it's another layer of why I think if Blake Shapin is the guy, if Blake Shapin's Baylor's quarterback next year, okay, don't, don't leave, don't jump ship. The guy's got an opportunity to be really good. He's got a lot of experience in this league. It took Max Duggan a long time to be good in the Big 12. It took him a long time to be good. It took Will Howard a long time to be good in this league. These quarterbacks who are younger or inexperience. Think about Spencer Sanders. The Some of the best quarterbacks today in the Big 12, in the last couple of years in the Big 12, sucked or not good when they were younger. There are exceptions to this, but most of the biggest and baddest quarterbacks in the Big 12 the last few years have been older guys. That's just, that's kind of the nature of college football, I guess. But Spencer Sanders, fr freshman year, chewed up, spit out. Caleb Williams, when he came and played Baylor and Waco, was so bad, they put Spencer Sanders back in the game. shapen has got a lot of that to him. Now, now look, come back healthy next year, find some new confidence. He needs a big, like, I don't, zen or something, with puncture, acupuncture, uh, like, hypnosis, anything to make his confidence better, which, as a fan base, you could probably help with. Anything to make his confidence better. And the guy could take the progression, the steps of a Max Duggan, of a Spencer Sanders, of a Will Howard, of a Jalen Daniels, who you've seen get progressively better over the course of their time in football. Uh, it doesn't happen for everybody. There are the Alan Bowmans of the world who just never really panned out to be great. There are those guys all across college football. Maybe Blake Shapin is one of them and Sawyer Robertson is your guy. But if Blake Shapin is the starter for Baylor next season. I'm now I'm now on board with it. I now am not going to throw it away as, oh my gosh, how did this happen? He is, and I will use this for the rest of this offseason, he is the leader of that locker room today. Could that change in a month? For sure. Oh, easily. Could it change over the course of spring practice? I mean, you know, one bad decision in the workplace, one bad decision in your household, one bad decision can break all trust and all confidence in a person. And that can happen as well for Blake Shapin for sure. But from what I have seen most recently, if he's the guy, then he's the right guy. If he's Baylor's guy, then he's the right guy. This, this coaching staff, they see that. They see the way he interacts with the players. They see the way he interacts in the locker room. They will err on the side of the guy that this team has the most confidence in. And what, what I saw was Blake Shapin garnering that from his teammates. So bring it on. If Shapin's the starter, I will show up to the games, not credentialed, and yell just as loud. I will. This has been tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Pete Sousa joins the show tomorrow from ESPN. Yeah, that Pete Sousa. Calls a lot of Baylor games. Calls a lot of Big 12 games. King McClure is supposed to come on here pretty soon, too. That's going to be fun. You guys like King. I like King. Pete Sousa tomorrow is talking Baylor basketball. The Big 12 will preview Baylor and Oklahoma in Waco on Wednesday. Oh, tomorrow. Uh, all that and more. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day, by the way. All that and more on tomorrow's show. This has been, and it always will be, locked on. Baylor!